Hello class. This lesson we're going to learn properties of points on perpendicular bisectors. So let's go over some recap on vocab. The two lines are perpendicular if they intersect. And what's special about the angles formed where they intersect? They are right angles, so they measure 90 degrees. You can also say that segments or rays are perpendicular if the lines that contain them are also perpendicular. And how do we actually make a perpendicular bisector? Take the compass, put the pivot on one end point of the segment, open it up more than halfway, draw a circle, flip it around, do the same at the other end point, don't change how big your compass is, and see where those two circles intersect. Connect those points of intersection and you have a perpendicular bisector. Now we already learned that perpendicular bisector is a line of reflection. So if you look at a segment and have a perpendicular bisector, any point on one side is equidistant from the corresponding point on the other side. Is the converse of that true? If, is, if you have a line of reflection, is it possible to have one that's not a perpendicular bisector? Well, let's try this image. See if you can find a line, the line of reflection here, but See if you can find it such that it's not a perpendicular bisector of uh, corresponding points in the segment connecting them. So here is a line of reflection I found. And it turns out that no matter how you did it, it had to be a perpendicular bisector. Why is that? So that was impossible what we were asked to do. Well, by the definition of a reflection, in order to reflect over a line, you're making it so that when you find a corresponding point in the image, that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of that segment that connects the corresponding points. So by the very way we make a, a reflection, uh, we're always going to have those perpendicular bisectors. But what about points that aren't on that segment? What about points that are on the perpendicular bisector, but not necessarily on the segment that connect the two corresponding points? Let's see what happens. So here we have a picture, and point P is not on the segment that connects G and H. So it's not on this blue segment right here. And how do we know definitively that GP equals HP? So think about that for a moment, and I'll show you the answer. Well, you know that there, when you reflect G over the line, you get H. And since P is on the line, it stays invariant. So when you reflect P, it's just P again. And so we have these two segments, GP and HP, and they're reflections of one another. So since distance is preserved, you know that those distances are the same. Another way you could think of that is since those points are equidistant from P, you could just draw a circle around P. And that circle, if it passes through G, it must pass through H. So we know that perpendicular bisectors are very important when talking about reflections. But what about our two other basic rigid motions? Well, for translations, we have to make parallel lines. Remember when we were uh, using our vectors. But you didn't really have to use perpendicular lines. I mean, there's ways to do it with them, but it's not necessary. Uh, but what about rotations? What do we learn about rotations? Well, think about how we find the center of rotation. How are the perpendicular bisectors important, and why do we need that? Well, to find the center of rotation, you have to construct perpendicular bisectors of corresponding points. And so I join these points with a blue segment, and these two with a pink segment. I found the perpendicular bisectors. And so here is the center of rotation. And remember, since we have rotation, 
these two lines must exist because we can always think of a rotation as doing two reflections. So that's why you can always have perpendicular bisectors uh, help you find the center. Now, what about this example? So we have a pre-image and an image of a triangle. And one of these statements is true and one of them is false. Which one is true and which one is false? Think about that. Well, the first one is saying that AB is the same length as A prime B prime. And that's true, right? We have a rotation here, and we know that rotations preserve distance. Okay. Well, if rotations preserve distance, then why isn't the second statement true? Well, the second statement is talking about AA prime and BB prime. And these two aren't the same length. But why is that if we have a rotation? Well, rotations preserve distance between points in a figure. In part B, we're actually looking at distances between a pre-image and an image. And that is not a property that is always true with basic rigid motions. That's not what that says. When we talk about distance preserving, we're talking about distances within figures. So if you pick two points in the pre-image, then the corresponding points in the image will have the, uh, the same distance between them, but not necessarily points between the two. So that's not always true. In this lesson, we learned about special properties of points on perpendicular bisectors and different ways that we can use perpendicular bisectors in our basic rigid motions. Thanks for watching this video.